I wonder if this thing is on. Oh, I think the camera's already rolling. The confession that I wanted to make today is before I became a practitioner, I never looked at my own sh I would drop those kids off at the pool and never look back. But years ago, when I finally did, I noticed that they were floating. <laughs> about you, but I used to be terrified of Jaws. It's almost as if my poop took on a life of its own, and I got a little scared. So logically, I did what anyone would do. I asked Google. I had no idea that a dirty war had been brewing about the topic. Floaters, sinkers, it was like people were rooting for their favorite basketball team, which made me wonder, which was the better poop to have? And could this dirty war truly be one? Hey there, it's Melissa Ramos from Sexy Food Therapy giving you the nutrition and Chinese nutrition therapeutic goods. Now, if you suffer from digestive issues and have ever wondered if a healthy poop is a sinker or a floater, well, you're in luck because I've got the answer for you. Are you ready? If so, let's do this. Let me start off by saying this, that the answer is, well, it depends. So let's break down the arguments. People on Team Floaters will tell you that floaters are a good thing because it means that your diet is high in fiber. And high fiber attracts bacteria, which can create gas, equaling floating sh Team sinkers will say that floaters are a sign that you are not digesting your fats properly. Now if you feel that this is you, one of the other signs of improper fat metabolism is that you can see any sort of red little goose flesh on the backs of your arms. This is a sign of vitamin A deficiency, a fat soluble vitamin. this isn't the case for everyone. Other fans of Team Sinkers will say that there's too much gas causing poops to float up to the surface. I mean, this definitely can be true. If you're someone who's not breaking down their food in their stomach and find yourself bloating, especially within half an hour after eating. The other reason is that you're eating too much sugar, causing food to ferment in your gut. So what can you do? Well, for starters, about five to 10 minutes before each main meal, you can take some ACV. You down with ACV, yeah, you know me. Who am I kidding? I'm not a hip hopper. I, I'm wearing a Lacoste baseball cap. ACV meaning unpasteurized apple cider vinegar. Simply take one teaspoon of the stuff directly in the mouth. Now, if you're still feeling gassy, pop an enzyme, but make sure that it has HCl in it, also known as hydrochloric acid, which helps to break down your food in your stomach right from the start. And lastly, if you're not breaking down your fats properly, try adding some sunflower lecithin, which comes in powder or capsules. <laughs> Lecithin helps to emulsify fats, and sunflower lecithin powder can be added easily to smoothies, sauces, and even soups. In the meantime, I gotta let you know that soon you'll be able to balance out your digestive system with my upcoming program, The Number Two Plan. But meanwhile, why not get my free chart that helps you understand what your poop says about you? Download that chart now at the end of this video. gonna put some serious hair on your chest. <gasps> Wait, that's not a teaspoon, that's a tablespoon.